you know, a, a modern classic, I would say, of Team of Rhinos versus a deck I don't think I have seen nearly as much. Maybe you can, you've seen it a little bit more and are the resident expert, but Naya Enchantress, what is going on here? Yeah, so Naya Enchantress, a bit of a brewski here from Anthony. And, you know, Enchantress is a deck we've seen. It really got a lot of injections from the Modern Horizons 2 set. Um, but this deck is really got some innovative cards. We have like Jessica Ascendancy to combo with our Sanctum Weavers and a bit of Reunion in order to give Haystar Emrakul in the turn we cast it. A lot of other really cool things. I don't want to spoil all the surprises right ahead, but just know <laughs> Anthony here, 3-0, has a lot of purpose with all of the cards in this deck, all 61 of them. Uh, so <laughs> a lot going on. I know you're a big fan of the 61 card special as a, uh, you mm-hmm. know, once again, a resident expert on that as well. I prefer a 62, a little 62. Oh, a little but... 62, a little extra flavor, a little season with your heart. Yeah, you got to up the land ratio. You're not going to add, you're going to add a spell, you're going to throw everything off. What are you going to yeah, do? Yeah, no, not a Th- chance. That's not Absolutely cooking. Not. <laughs> that's not, that's not cooking. And like, if you're going to let Mason cook, he, he's going to make sure it's very well seasoned. As these <laughs> players looking at some opening hands here. Yeah, Anthony Netherlands, great performance, great start here, three and zero oh with his take on Naya Enchantress, something we haven't seen too much of. And you have to imagine that you know, with this dominant performance and this uh, dominant start here, gonna have a plan for the Team of Rhinos deck. So exactly, gonna see as we replace a sleeve, little sleeve replacement action. What? Yeah this matchup is going to play out as <laughs> solitary confinement is a really hard card to beat once it comes down now some rhinos players play brazen borrower it looks like we do have the full four here for cj someone we've seen on the tour do very well with the rhinos deck at multiple points um but you know with brazen borrower that's sort of an out that normally doesn't happen but we have cards like starling grove that do give hexproof to our enchantments so there might be a little house of cards situation to require cj to really come together as we do get a fetch with snow covered forest yeah, Snow Covered Forest, the start, and you called out the team around his deck 4 4, Brazen Borrowers, and notably no Mystical Disputes. That's going to play big here against a Naya Enchantress deck where they're probably not going to be super good as this forest is going to be very quickly tapped for Utopia Sprawl. Very common Enchantress start. Got to be very cheap enchantments that can draw cards later on and can you know add a little bit of mana. And I love using yeah. the, uh, the Epic Storm token here to indicate which color we're doing. We are using white for our Utopia Sprawl. I like it. Yeah, it's essentially a land for all kinds of purposes. So, like, you know, having it happen is pretty good. Yeah, make they make artifact lands. Haven't made a ton of enchantment lands, so sometimes you mm-hmm. you know got to use some utopia spells to get it done. As we very quickly pass back to Anthony, just to miss the reinforce for the team Rhinos deck, and a Sterling Grove going to enter the battlefield. Yeah, gonna have to get a read on this one, and we can as well. This card mm-hmm. gives other enchantments you control shroud and you can sacrifice it search the library for any enchantment reveal it and put it on top so it can play double duty protecting your enchantments from removal and can uh, go search some things up and i think there's some sweet targets that that anthony actually has access to a bunch of one ofs in the, in the deck list yeah that's sort of the thing with these toolbox decks and you have a card like this you get access to just a bunch of things that can come up in weird situations and it's going to give us that redundancy you know we talked about there being four brazen bars to break up uh our solitary confinements but, you know, if we need to, we can just find it and just sort of get some time to actually build up our house of cards. Another Utopia Sprawl coming down, switching up on the lands, make sure nothing gets blown up here, as we are going to see this Solitary Confinement. Yeah, it's going to be on red. If you're CJ, you might, you know, raise an eyebrow to that one, but we know there's Jessica Ascendancy in the deck. Yeah, Jessica Ascendancy, Blood Moons as well, got a pair of those. So plenty of red options if we want them, as a Triome is fetched. And, you know, CJ may not actually see a Blood Moon coming with how we are, you know, we're fetching a Triome here, turn one, I mean, when your opponent fetches two, you know, specifically forests and is using these Utopia Sprawls to kind of fix the mana, card that maybe could be on your radar, especially with access to an Enchantment Tutor on something like, you know, the upkeep, but maybe a little bit awkward to use it that way when we, uh, you know, have Utopia Sprawls attached to all of our lands as a Scalding Tarn in pass of the turn. Okay, very quickly Nothing draw is Anthony. We'll see what he can assemble here. Lots of mana here. Four mana on turn three. Yep. So do you see a Winsome Pete come down? And if we see something like a Plains here, that might be because we're going to have a Blood Moon happening. Or just free. I mean, this deck is not very heavy on on specifically colored pips. Also, it's just like kind of the free thing. You get to play around opposing Blood Moons and playing your own Blood Moons without really any issue. Don't have to be very intentional about it. Because I believe we maybe lost another sleeve. Um, They're just falling left and right over here. Kind of like Anthony's opponents today. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's it's, uh, like a great like voodoo metaphor. Or the, mm-hmm. the sleeves are your your opponents. Each rip is your opponent's boss. 
Sheesh. Bardic moment. It does look like... Oh, there we go. Okay. So with two mana up, no ice coming down. Notably, ice really good against the card Utopia's Ball, right? Like, if you're going to put a bunch of mana on your lands, uh, tapping those down, extremely powerful. No ice from CJ. We have any play at all here for two mana? You mentioned four Brazen Borrowers. Could potentially reach for bouncing like the Sterling Grove, try to just trade even on mana. Yeah, so we're going to get a judge call. Anthony picked up his hand in order to look at what he what had, and we forgot he was pulling out a deck. Uh, I, 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 so I don't know why the judge is in our ears, but I think the player accidentally put some cards in their hand. Uh, we can talk to the players. They made the judge call, not us. Um, but yeah, I think what happened is Anthony here was searching their deck, accidentally put the card they were they re sleeved into their hand, you know, and while they didn't move the cards, we still technically that's adding cards to hand, et cetera, which is, you know, an error. These players are going to figure it out with the judge here in a second. Um, yeah, as we, as we get this judge call across here, while these players are figuring out exactly what we're going to do which maybe yeah okay we're, we're still in the process of a judge call here so well while we're doing about that let's talk a little bit about us and what we have to offer here on the nrg series specifically if you're interested in this naya enchantress deck and you're interested in bringing it to a future event we have a, another modern showdown coming up in june very very soon into chicago land yeah, you can take a look at that here. $10,000 Modern Showdown can play for not just an invite to the regional championship, but you can also play for an invite to our end of the year NRG championship. A lot on the line if you like modern and you like modern decks, which I assume you do if you're here watching our lovely coverage. And of course, if you're not as much on modern, bigger on legacy, you can play some of that too on Sunday. That's going to happen, of course, in Chicagoland, June 24th, 25th. After that, you can talk about the event in St. Louis once again opportunities to play modern that's going to happen in july with this team showdown uh there you can get your entire squad qualified for both the rc and the nrg championship take your team to victory of course pool of ten thousand dollars and once again if you're a legacy fan like i am legacy will happen on sunday in a legacy trial and that's of course july st louis july 8th through ninth and last but not least the third event next after this is going to be happening in detroit another modern showdown if you're modern fans there's a lot of opportunities to play on the energy series come out get the rc invite get you some energy points get you qualified for the energy championship and of course if you like a little bit of pioneer action we got some of that to offer on sunday as well i know mason is going to be playing quite a bit of modern somebody that you can uh, check out as well <laughs> listen to some of his uh, his thoughts on modern both here in the booth and on Twitter. Love modern. It's got to be my favorite format right now. It is so much fun. There's so much powerful stuff happening. So it looks like we are resolving it. So sort of the way this works, because it looks to be a hitting card error, is that mm -hmm. uh, CJ is going to get to look at the hand and then put a card back. Um, that is sort of how this, like the rules have changed in recent years. That sort of uh, seems to be what's happening here. And so those, the, and since two cards touched, we get to put two cards back. So unfortunately, there's just guys haven't seen stuff like that. It's going to go back here. And this is why it's very important. You know, we see players be very precise about when they put their hands. I often try to like put my hand in front of my lamps when I'm fetching or something like that. Uh, or, you know, away from the table, there's a bunch of cards going on. Just don't want to get the cards confused. It's an easy mistake to happen. No ill intent, I'm sure, from Anthony here. Yeah, just a little bit, of, a little bit of sleeve replacement, but got to make sure there's no opportunities for any kind of abuse in any point in time. And uh, you know, unfortunately, that means sometimes awkward things like this happen. As there's no further play on turn number three for Anthony, and just a pass of the turn back to CJ, who's in the turn going to fetch. And this, you know, having to do nothing really here on turn two, going to be a big deal for CJ as the turn for Rhinos really does kind of get started on turn three most of the time. Sometimes gemstone caverns and things like that can accelerate that. But as far as assembling pressure, specifically crashing footfalls, 2 four, four Rhinos, getting the game over with, really happens on turn three. So we'll see if CJ has access to Rhinos, if he even wants to do so, you know, sorcery speed, if we're going to do that, potentially at instant speed through something like Violent Outburst. Quick fetch would indicate maybe the uh, the former. But yeah. turn three, really the, the, the big action turn for the team of Rhinos deck. Yep. As CJ falls to 15 here from an old fetch and shock. 
And we saw cards like On Thin Ice in Anthony's hand. That's a nice one for one spell. One for one spell is not super great against the Rhino's deck, though. Oh, <laughs> hey. top. there you go. How about that? Crushing footfalls, no shuffle necessary. Here comes two Rhinos. 10 power is going to represent a two turn clock for Anthony, provided he cannot find any. Um, anything to stop that from happening though you called out specifically solitary confinement potentially an option as on thin ice is deployed that's going to take care of a rhino token yeah i don't think we have any way to blink in this build of the deck but i have seen you know yorion styles of this deck before uh give you a little bit more access to toolbox and larger package and then the cards like on thin ice that work very well against tokens you can blink them there so something you know we have seen players mess with as an attack for six comes across dropping anthony to nine Attack for six, draws a drop Anthony to nine. But once again, a three turn clock, not a two. This on thin ice is going to do, do a good job kind of stymieing some of the, the pressure here. But CJ, of course, a lot of cards in hand, potentially has access to more pressures. We're fetching with what looks to be a wooded foothills. Forest the grab, respecting potentially Bloodman. Yeah. Or just well, wants to keep his life total high. Yeah, I just be a spot where CJ is not exactly sure what's going on. And that Sterling Griff can activate at any point at instant speed to go find, you know, a certain enchantment. So looks like it is going to be a Murktide Regent. Murktide Regent. And only only a 4-4, but a 4-4 in the air does make it, once again, a lethal board state. So Anthony going to need to do something about at least one of these creatures if he wants to take another draw step after this one. We'll see exactly what he decides to do. It does look like looks he has a like cycle the trial. Cycle the triome. A little redraw. Probably like on thin ice. Sterling here. Grove first. Yeah, it might be a spot on. where Anthony thinks I need to find one of my Enchantress cards because Solitary Confinement does make it where you don't draw a card each turn. So Anthony might be like, okay, I need to find an, you know, a Sithis or something in order to get ahead of here. Yeah, three man. I'll see what it is. And it is a Solitary Confinement. So mm -hmm. you know, this card going to basically make it to where. Uh, I mean, you can't be damaged. Brazen Borrower going to go ahead and go after the Sterling Grove. That one has to be answered first because otherwise all the other enchantments have Shroud. So the Solitary Confinement was a little bit protected there. Now at the beginning of upkeep, we have to sacrifice it unless we discard a card. So Anthony going to need to find a way to kind of break out of not really being able to you take a look at this weirdo, <laughs> being able to break out of basically skipping the draw step and losing cards every single turn. More or less just kind of delays the inevitable, but we'll give Anthony access to more mana as time goes on as here's another shardless agent just adding more pressure to the board cj content to make sure that anthony's going to be very very dead when solitary confinement is finally sacrificed to its ability so here's another crashing footfalls yep and this is why you'll typically see the enchantress players play things like enchantress's presence sit this a second hand those sort of cards that will uh, provide you redraws when you play enchantments not only because the whole deck's enchantments but because cards like solitary confinement you know, sort of don't allow you to actually get new material. Exactly. And, and once again, like the kind of a draw to Solitary Confinement in a spot like this when you have something like a Sterling Grove is you have time to, you know, not just act like activate the Sterling Grove, but play potentially a very large enchantment or something like that after the fact. We'll see. Scythus. Okay. Scythus mm -hmm. gets things started and then we can redeploy the Sterling Grove. That's going to draw a card and a think gain a life. life. Yeah, there we go. A little upgrade to the normal Enchantress effect. Going to get a little bit of life back. Uh, that's an... Oh, a boom bust in response. Uh, yeah. yeah. It is when you cast, though, so... Yeah, still going to get the card. And Sterling Grove, not in play, so the Scythus doesn't have Shroud. That one is going to get picked off by the dead gone. And yeah, it looks like that's going to do it. With that dead gone, that's going to stifle everything Anthony has access to. And that's going to be the end of game number one. Yep. Anthony here got a big sideboard full of stuff. Trick, what might, uh, what are those cards in there? <laughs> the access that Anthony has in his sideboard two copies of Ossification, two copies of Rest in Peace, one copy of Seal of Primordium, two Stony Silence, one Blood Moon, one Nevermore, one Spark Rupture, four Leyline of Sanctity, and one. Paseju who endures. Now, I don't know a ton about Enchantress, so you're going to have to tell me what adjustments are we making against this team of Rhinos deck. 
So Nevermore is a card I imagine we're going to pick. That's a, it enters the battlefield, you name a card, that card can't be cast. So we can use that to actually name Petty Theft on Brazen Bar. We have the lock set up or on Crashing Footfalls earlier in the game to prevent any Rhinos from coming down. I'm going to imagine that's the situation. We don't have many other cards that are super good in this sort of matchup. I imagine we might have a situation where we might have some cards in our main deck that aren't very good and we want to play a card like Ossification just to have another kill spell for the Rhinos. Obviously, one-for-one one removal isn't the best in the world, but these Blood Moons aren't super great either. So we might just see, hey, we're going to bring in the one Nethermore. We're going to take out this second Blood Moon, just bring our Ossification. It's super mid, but at least it answers half a Rhino and gives me a couple more draw steps. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Just die and, and things like Merktide Regent or whatever, you know, potentially something you're, you're going to look to remove as well. That makes a lot of sense. All right, for Team of Rhinos, we have the simplest sideboard possible, just four different cards. So it's going to be four Endurance, four Force of Vigor, four Mystical Spirit, and three Blood Moon. Sideboarding should be pretty straightforward here. What do you like? Four Force of Vigors. <laughs> they destroy yeah, I like enchantments. <laughs> <laughs> I right. don't like cards that don't interact with enchantments. I would cut those from my deck. <laughs> That is that is the groundbreaking analysis that they pay the big bucks for, Mason. Bring in the cards that destroy enchantments. Cut the cards that don't destroy enchantments. And, I mean, to the extent that things destroy enchantments, you know, forces and stuff like that might still be good. But, you know, maybe throttle back some of the some of the other removal spells. So sideboarding for CJ. Very simple sideboard. It's a very simple sideboard plan. Uh, and we will see, now that he knows a little bit about what's up with Anthony's deck, how the games will proceed from here. 100%. And if you're enjoying this and proceeding from here, we still have four <laughs> more rounds of magic, including a top eight today. So I want to make sure to click that follow button. That way you don't miss any of the action. And if you got a Twitch Prime, drop a Twitch Prime. Someone's going to have it. I don't even care who uses it. Just make sure you use it between now and the time of rerolls over. You know, we got to take those bucks from Amazon where we can support somebody out there. But make sure to drop a follow. We don't miss any of the paper action. We've got basically monthly big tournaments like this happening. So you want to support the energy series and paper magic like that. You know, everyone's always talking about they want more paper magic. Here's your chance to let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Showing support for the team and the coverage, the great shows they put on. One of the best ways you can support competitive magic in general. CJ does a quick little count here. The old deck list post sideboarding. No gemstone caverns for CJ like we've seen in other deck lists. So not going to be able to do any kind of play stealing at any point. However, once again, very simple sideboard, a lot of force of vigors, and those are going to be very potent in this matchup. So we will see what Anthony's plan is. We saw a lot of cards that offer up Shroud. There's whatever, the full four Sterling Grove and two uh, greater Auromancy. It does a lot to protect your enchantments. So certainly something oh, you're ready for. I, I got to call it out. I, I hate pile counting. It, it, it is the worst. Pile counting into riffle shuffling your opponent's deck has to be a social faux pas. I don't know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can respect Mason, I them. do that. I, look, I, I pile you, shuffle my deck, and then I, I always always riff. Well, not riffle, but like, you know, whatever. I shuffle no. cut. Riffle, okay, we, riffle's more egregious. R- okay. Riffle is where I don't mind. <laughs> shuffling is normal. The, it was a double riffle, too, from CJ. CJ riffled, heard me talk some mad smack, and did it again. <laughs> You just, you just, yeah, yeah, okay, fine. No, you got me there. And like, I was, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, whatever. I don't ripple yeah, shuffle. It's all, I it's ripple my own deck. Here. I pile yeah. shuffle, but that, that clearly said, you know, you, you have some large, large thoughts about that one from what I, what I heard. That uh, is... Listen, I have a lot of thoughts about pile <laughs> counting in general, but oh, the, it's just, it was too much. It, I was over the line, you know. Oh, it just happened that's to from Anthony here is going to, going to find a land. It's likely, we'll see if he's still interested in grabbing basics. Is not. Stomping ground going to fetch on instep. CJ has wooded fills up as well. Blood Moon, clearly not really Anthony's primary game plan in this matchup based on that fetch as we move here to Anthony's turn to doing a little bit of riffling of his own. Go ahead, you know, I, riffle your own. I riffle, I riffle my, my dual lands. I let, I, I do what sure, I gotta yeah. do. Yeah. There you go. A, a little Indian shuffle, I believe is what it's called. Oh, is that, is that what it's called? I'm not, I'm not familiar yeah, with the term. I, I looked up when I was a kid because Yugi and Yu-Gi-Oh would shuffle like that all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I think it was called the Indian or maybe the Hindu. I can't actually remember. Uh, but I remember looking that up one day as a kid because for me, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And it turns out it it's not cool. very it looks randomizing really cool. your deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but from what I, I never do it because from what I understand, you know, there is some questions about exactly the, the efficacy of it all. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, let's do some more shuffling. <laughs> so nice we did it twice. What did Foothill yeah. sacrifice for Anthony? Going to go finding likely a basic here. Try to save some life points. 
But yeah. Oh, very quickly yeah. found a snow covered forest. Uh, mm -hmm. Make those onto nices and such function. But yeah, no, yeah. I, whatever. It, yeah. It's a cool, yeah, cool and also it, It's a cool little shuffle. And also Antsy did it a couple times and Riffled. It's not the end of the world or whatever, but it it, it is, you know, just a thing. And it's a fine way to sort of cut your opponent's down. Yeah, better cut. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. see that. Better cut than it is a shuffle. Yeah. Utopia so Sprawl. Going to name I... White. Okay. Follow up. We have White Mana now. Let's see if there's something like a Psychus to come down. Is Greater Auromancy. <laughs> no. All right. All have Shroud now. Yeah. Every, well, oh, not the Auromancy itself. We need the Sterling yes. Grove to make that one happen. That's the full lock. Uh, mm -hmm. So all enchantments or other enchantments you control have Shroud. And then enchanted creatures you control have Shroud. Probably, I, I don't really understand the enchanted creatures you control have Shroud. That feels maybe a little dissynergistic. But what matters here is that the enchantments themselves, of course, have Shroud. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Like if you get a, like a couple cool things on it, that might matter. But I guess the enchanted creatures having shroud makes them fall off immediately. I, I don't think I don't that's how that works anymore, right? I think like you're safe once it's on, but like you can't put more uh, on. So if you're building your deck yeah. where it's like, all right, hey, cool, I got my creatures and my enchantments to put on the creatures. I really like those to have shroud. Well, they they you just, you, just, you just can't put more enchantments on. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. Either way, scalding turn, <laughs> pass the turn back for CJ. I, just, I, don't, I don't want to be a game designer right now. I will just say that. <laughs> players aren't the good guys and we don't need to protect them getting more cards so. sure for sure and chandris's <laughs> presence a incredibly relevant drop here for anthony that's going to get the cards going doesn't die to something like dead gone like we've seen before and brazen borrower we're going to happen in response but that one once again has to kind of go after the greater aromancy first so we're going to see the petty theft targeting greater aromancy boing yeah this is going to really signal something like force of vigor right Bouncing an enchantment to your opponent's hand when they just put a card that triggers off enchantments being played, probably not your greatest spot unless you have something that can answer that immediately. And we are going to see the Force of Vigor here end of turn. Yeah, Force of Vigor right away. A lot of respect for the power of these Enchantress's presence. I mean, the deck's called Enchantress, named after such effects. The ability to draw a card for every enchantment is very, very strong. And clearly, you know, CJ willing to bounce the Greater Aromancy and then pitch cast this uh, Force of Vigor right away to take care of that. A lot of respect for the potency of that, those specific effects. Now, three mana assembled. We'll see if there's any rhinos up to no good for CJ. And there's a pretty good chance that there's a pretty good chance that happening with violent outburst being the pitch from force of negation. Right. I mean, some amount of it's mm -hmm. the density of your green cards are you know Charlotte's agents and and violent outburst. But yeah, if you're willing to pitch one, you likely have another, and he sure does. It's Charlotte's agent, which puts two additional power in play as well. Once again, two turn clock right off the jump. As we go you know, deep for the crashing footfalls. I, I had this happen to me. <laughs> this had to be an event once when I played against Living In, where they actually cast a Cascader and hit their other seven. And so I knew I was safe until a fetch land happened. And I think we're actually dangerously close having for CJ. If I'm Anthony, I'm taking a look, but I think we maybe hit all six Cascaders. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can just figure out exactly how he sideboarded and exactly what's going on. Take a quick look here as yeah. we revealed so many cards. Maybe one of the downsides of Cascade. That's that's a cool little cool little trick. I'm safe until there's another fetch. You're not drawing one of those. It is real. That's wild. Oh yeah, a cut little that cut pile. there too. Love it. I would have riffle shuffled the cut personally. Savage. Just, <laughs> just, just a little <laughs> This is actually savage. Let's go back to Anthony. No Utopia Sprawl. Force of Vigor made sure of that. A lot of pressure in play. Need to assemble some Enchantress effects and then something like a Solitaire Confinement. Utopia Sprawl, great way to get it started. Get a name White. Follow up. Maybe an Onto Nice. I'm um, still thinking. Yeah, I might get a Greater Oromancy first just to protect. Yeah. Protect the Onthan Ice. Yeah, let's get that started. There you go. There's a great arm and see Onthan Ice going to take care of the Rhino token. And now, once again, only a two turn clock. And like you said, maybe maybe not so many Cascaders left after we cascaded through most of the deck. Looks like that might be the case for CJ as Steam Vent's going to come into play untapped. Four mana. Brazen Borrower at the ready in the adventure zone. Here's an attack for six. Not going to do any blocking. Just to suspend of crashing footfalls. <laughs> I like to suspend all in the battlefield. Yeah, just with the creatures. Look, I'm mm -hmm. letting you know what this is. This is going to be two rhinos. Keep this. This game is where up. this one's going. 
<laughs> Just give it some time. Speaking of time, CJ, get one more look before we pass the turn across. And no effects. Back to Anthony we go. Upkeep. Gonna ice down, and this is ooh, this is kind of brutal. When Anthony needs to assemble a lot in order to not, you know, die to all this pressure, icing down two mana is quite, quite potent. And to the extent that CJ is willing to do it over Brazen Borrower. Yeah. And th this is, a, you know, a big reason why the Rhinos deck is so good. It gets pressure on the board quickly, sort of, you know, puts the opponent on the back foot and really asks a lot of them here. As you know, a card like Sith's second hand comes down. It, that's part of a lock piece. But, you know, we have so much pressure now that we don't have a card like solitary confinement, it might not be enough. Yeah, and Scythus can can do some amount to gain some life, but does not actually do any of the attacking and blocking very well. It's only a one-two. So the, the the even the two-two is still going to be able to attack freely as we see CJ snap off that right away. Here comes another attack to six for CJ. We'll see if there's any kind of follow-ups. Doesn't look like there is, so we're just going to pass the turn back. Scythus, all right. I mean, this is the kind of setup that Enchantress is looking for. A lot of mana, and Enchantress effect in play. You're protected with Shroud. A lot of pressure going on, but each enchantment you cast gains some life. What will Anthony put forth? Two mana. Three, Three mana. Three mana? Nope, two mana. Ossification. Oh. That will trigger Scythus. And yeah, you called out those ossifications potentially coming in there. They came in indeed, and they're coming up big here. Enchants a basic, exiles a creature or planeswalker, and the opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Very good against rhino tokens. You're never getting those back, no matter how many fours of figures you got. Yeehaw. <laughs> this saves you the land for turn. And three mana tapped. Blood Moon. Blood Moon. They stayed in. Here's a trigger. And that one's going to have Shroud. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks like with the trigger on the stack. Well, the Kethis is an enchantment creature, so you're not going to be able to do anything silly there. Okay, we are going to get a flash of Brazen Bar. Right? Yeah, flash of the Brazen Bar, where a lot of the pressure removed for CJ. Go ahead and get five total power in play. Not lethal anymore, though. Anthony potentially going to be able to untap yet again with the... Scythus in play, and that's, I mean, a big deal for the Enchantress deck. We'll see. You know, Blood Moon, got to be a big deal for CJ to play through, and still two turns till this Crashing Footfalls comes off of Suspend. Access to only blue mana and red mana. Here's an attack for five. Yeah, and that's going to put Anthony down to eight, I believe. I think we missed the last little trigger. So Anthony can, you know, cobble together another ossification type card. We might be able to buy a little time if we are down to three here, but we need to do something sooner than later. As solitary confinement, and there's comes solitary down, confinement that does quite a bit. Yeah, this is huge because also you know we're not going to be able to draw cards for turn anymore, but we're going to get multiple turns to use our mana, and every one of our enchantments is going to draw us a card thanks to Sithis. So if we can find another like enchantress's presence or something like that. We could be in a good spot, but also we're just gaining life and drawing cards with the Sithis. Oh, an abundant growth here that's going to draw two cards. We might be able to like lose the confinement for a turn survive an attack and then rebuild so yeah i mean even if you only do it for a few turns you have things like these abundant gross that represent two cards and can buy an additional uh, turn as well as just drawing cards uh and gaining life so that maybe you can like you said you can survive a turn and odawara on instep is going to go after the greater aramancy can't go after the blood moon because it has shroud thanks to the aramancy but, but bouncing once again bouncing enchantment in the face of a solitary confinement site this is a tough spot to be cj potentially looking for some kind of removal spell for the Scythus with this window he's given himself thanks to the Odawara bouncing greater Oromancy, but it needs to happen now. As Crashing Footfall is now at one. That's something like a force negation hand for CJ. Pretty relevant too, you know, if you decide to let, you could let the Solitary Confinement pop and then have another one in hand, right? And so if CJ has a blue card in hand, we could see that happen as a way to you know, generate a card or whatever and then get more triggers, his, triggers off the Enchantress's presence, but We'll see what's going to happen here. And we Anthony are up three and this deck a bunch. Solitary confinement. You need to discard a card. Going to discard windswept heath. Do skip your draw step as part of solitary confinement. So, but we know there's an, there's at least a greater aura Nancy involved. I have to imagine that one's going to come down, and it sure is. That's going to trigger Scythus, and that's going to put the shields back up for Anthony. So CJ, yeah. maybe I see a fury in hand was hoping to draw a red card or a land in order to be able to fury away that Scythus. Didn't happen. 
And now, Greater Aramance is going to once again protect all these enchantments. Scythe is going to continue to draw cards with Utopia Sprawl. Draw a card, gain a life. And like you mentioned, we do need, I assume, a second Enchantress effect so that we can actually get ahead of the Solitary Confinement instead of just at replacement rate. So we may have to put the shields down eventually. The question is, what's left over when that happens? For sure. Twitch chat, I will pull this car over. I need y'all to calm down <laughs> as we are <laughs> popping off over here in this game. Uh, it just looked like <laughs> we have a bunch of mana. Uh, lot that was my of mana best to dad. work with. A Scythus to work with. Like I said, this is exactly where Enchantress is trying to get to. Seal of Primordium added to the mix. Yeah, possible Anthony just didn't like some of those cards in the main deck and thought maybe CJ will have some weird enchantment card I can have the answer to. Also, I think it blows up artifacts. So if it does, that's going to blow up the Shardless Agent. Not nothing. You know, we might yeah, be able to gain sure. enough life. Yeah, blowing up Shardless Agent worth quite a bit when there's, when you, you know, when your opponent can't cast any spells, <laughs> being able to uh, have any kind of removal spell at all to stymie some of the aggression matters a lot. And Anthony already at eight. You know, if the shield ever has to come down on solitary confinement, things look good. But these rhinos are entering play, so we're going to need to gain a little bit more life if we're going to want to outpace those. But it does do some amount to potentially buy yourself another turn without solitary confinement. Merktide Regent, the pickup for CJ, doesn't look like that's going to add anything to what he has going on at the moment. Just once again, waiting at sea at the mercy of the top of Anthony's deck uh, from the Scythus draws. And here goes the solitary confinement. All right. Got to have a big turn for Anthony. Yeah, and this is going to be so hard to do because CJ also has the Force Negation hand that he can now hard cast. So Anthony, once again, maybe had a Solitary Confinement in hand and was just letting it pop to get a draw step for turn. You do need to work through the land patches if you're going to play a card like Confinement, but it might not resolve here depending on what Anthony has, as it does look like a Sterling Grove. Sterling Grove. All right, maybe a mana floating here. Didn't get a great look. I think there's three mana. That that land makes three mana. Going to go ahead and trigger sight this draw a card. Enchantments have super shroud, so now nothing can be targeted at all. And importantly, Sterling Grove represents a you know top of the deck tutor that Scythus can basically give you the card right away with if there is another enchantment involved for Anthony. But you mentioned this force of negation could, could come, come up, up really huge. Yeah, my mistake there, Chad. I said hard cast, I meant pitch cast. Oopsie poopsie there. <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes. As we are going to see it get pitch cast with the Murktide. Yeah, there it is. There's the pitch cast. Murktide reach it, hitting the exile zone. Going to exile the Enchantress's presence. Anthony does still draw a card, gain a life up to 10. However, more than 10 in on the battlefield. Seal of Primordium represents the ability to take out the Charlotte's Agent. And then if you don't want to block the Scythe, this, you need to gain at least two more life. Yep, it's two enchantments. Hard, hard to do, but maybe not. Hall well, of Heliod's it, generosity. That that's one's good alongside solitary confinement. Yeah, I mean, if we can get that one, that loop happening, we can just essentially not move forward in the game. But we'll never deck, and our opponent can never attack us. Now there are cards like Force Negation that we saw that could answer it, but it can be a really important piece of this puzzle. You know, put a solitary confinement on top, then put another enchantment on top off the trigger from the solitary confinement we could easily move through it here right yeah because if you draw an enchantment you can do that first and then whatever you you have left over is your solitary confinement mm -hmm. card so you know eventually i mean i imagine anthony will assemble a second presence or whatever it takes and get the kill and it looks like we are going to just accept that we have to block with our scythus as these rhino tokens do have trample Anthony is at 10. Scythe is two toughness. Going to use the Seal of Primordium to take out Charlotte's Agent. Looks like that's not going to be enough to save him. And Anthony is going to be felled to the Team of Rhinos deck. CJ winning this one two games to zero against Nye Enchantress. A really, awesome. really close game, uh, game two there. But just a little too much with the Force of Negation and the Force of Vigor uh, able to kind of stymie the, the progression for Anthony. That's true. And we have a lot more magic to cover this round. We're going to get an interview with CJ potentially here. Assuming CJ has time, maybe there's something going on. You never know anything like that. But if not, we do have backup feature matches going on, which should be pretty cool. We'll check those out if there is time. But yeah, we've seen CJ, you know, do pretty well here on our series and plays a lot of rhinos, at least in the time that I've covered CJ in the booth. And so curious to see sort of why did we choose to do this sort of deck? Why aren't like in comparison to the gemstone caverns and the mystical speech, you know, clearly CJ has ideas and thoughts. It's going to be interesting to see how that goes. 
Yeah, absolutely. And Rhino's you know, a deck we've seen quite a bit of at our series so far. Tiago Saparito, we mentioned just like basic copy paste. Hey, Nathan Stewart's doing it. It must be the right thing to do. A lot of people, big team of Rhino's fans, CJ, no stranger to it as well. So with that, let's dive down and have a talk to CJ himself. Hear what he has to say about Rhino's. Oh, 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 sorry. Well, he's still getting, still getting set up. But either way, we're going to have him up here in, in just a moment. But yeah, as I was saying, Rhino's, even different configurations, it's something that we see CJ kind of a shoe in that dispute uh, development. And yeah, maybe we're ready now. We can dive right in and talk to CJ himself. Hey, CJ, congratulations. Hey, how's it going? Thank you very much. An incredible performance. So talk to me about your, your preparation for this modern event and specifically your uh, rationale for choosing Rhinos for this weekend. Uh, so I've been on Rhinos for uh, a little over a year now. Um, it was the deck that I was wanting to get back into Modern with when uh, Modern Horizons 2 dropped. Uh, it was one of the cheaper decks at the, uh, at the time, but you know now that it's picked up popularity, it's uh, a little bit more on the uh, expensive side now. So, um, But my preparation, I pretty much ran back what I had in Chicago. Uh, the big difference I ended up doing was just removing Emrakul because... Uh, at the time, I thought people would be more on a mill plan since uh, the new Jace was pretty good. Um, but nobody's really running mill this, these days, so I went back into a uh, fourth Mystical Dispute, which is like my biggest difference. Um, in terms of configurations, though, I know that there's a popular list by uh, Bullwinkle going around where they have Mysticals in the main. Um, I think it's really good for your harder matchups like any Teferi deck or Merktide deck, but... Um, I like to play more for the field itself where, you know, you might not run into those decks. So I actually just enjoy having the two subtleties and then the uh, three Merc Tides over it. Yeah, that gotcha. makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, yeah, obviously much less of a Rhinos expert than you are. Talk to me about specifically, this is something that we've talked about a fair bit in the booth here, mostly me because I think it's really cool. Talk about your exclusion of Gemstone Caverns. That's a card we've seen picked up quite a bit in main decks and sideboards. What's, uh, what's your thoughts on having more of those in the sideboard and access to that card in general? Yeah, so I have a, a hot take here. Um, Ooh, I actually it, think that if you are running Gemstones in the sideboard, um, I, I just don't agree with it. I feel like you should just be running it in the main um, in some way, shape, or form. Um, I, if you're wanting to have that extra play draw, um, where it's really important to be on the play, um, why not just run the second one in the main? Um, there is some flex spots where, uh, there are some lands where you could cut for it. Um, I specifically just like running the one, um, I've been burnt too many times where I have a gemstone out and I have a second one where it's, oh, this is awkward. Now I have to tap for mana, then sack it and then play it again. Uh, my last round opponent, actually, they ran into that where, uh, they needed the fifth land in order to cast a Fury, and they forgot the legendary rule, so they just played it out, um, forgetting to tap first, and it kind of bit them in the butt. So, yeah, absolutely, that can get really messy. And non a non named land that is legendary is something that uh, definitely comes up. Yeah. Uh, by the way, speaking of rhinos, a lot of players are saying rhinos is maybe the best deck in modern. What are your sort of thoughts on? Do you think this is one of the best with the best uh, decks? You mentioned sort of picking up a while ago and sort of it being your modern deck. So I'm curious to see. You know, do you sort of feel that sentiment like, oh, the world's finally caught on, or do you think maybe it's a little overhyped, maybe underhyped? Maybe it just is clearly the best in your opinion. I don't think it's the best. Uh, I think it's um, above average for sure. Um, it loses to a lot of decks that want to grind longer um so if you're not really skilled with the deck you're gonna just try to jam your rhinos on turn three every time and uh there's some cases where you actually need to prepare for a longer game um a good uh, example would be like in the mirror for if you're playing in the mirror for whatever reason um you don't want to be like two for winning yourselves on force of negations when uh every card matters since you're both like doing the same thing um and matchups like elementals um back when money pile was a thing it was actually an insanely difficult matchup because it's just they are able to go long and you're just trying to beat them before then and it just would never come up um now that elementals is kind of like the remain uh remnants of money pile you still get that uh longevity um but the longer the game goes it's very hard for rhinos to uh, keep going um it's more early to mid game uh, is what you're shooting for um so i don't think it's uh absurdly powerful i think it's just above average Awesome. Well, CJ, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us there. Go enjoy a little bit of time for us around. You're halfway through the tournament in a good position. Maybe we'll see you again later today. Yeah, thanks, everyone. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you, CJ. <laughs> you as well, CJ. 
I mean, I'm having a great day. It makes me want to click follow on the Twitch chat here. And it makes me want to go to one of the future events, which if you want to go to one of those, we have one in Chicagoland here, June 24th through the 25th. We have a modern 10K showdown. Those 10K showdowns are the ones that qualify for the end of the year series championship. Our current reigning champ, Raja Suleiman, will be there, along with some of our other winners like Daniel Wise and Dykeman as well. We have a Sunday 5K Legacy Trial. So if you're a Legacy player, we love you here on the NRG Series. Speaking of which, we have another Legacy event after that. That's going to be July 8th and the 9th. We have a team showdown, Pioneer, Modern, Legacy. Get two of you and your friends. Go there. If y'all win that showdown, all three of you make it to the end of the year series championship. That's $25,000 on the line there. A lot of money, 16-person field. Very fun. And we have a Legacy 5K Trial, once again, for all the Legacy heads. Then we're going to go to Detroit uh, later on near the end of the year here in August 12th to the 13th with a modern 10k showdown and then a pioneer 5k trial as well. All these avoid leaderboard points, by the way. So it's not just the showdowns that matter. If you consistently come up to our events and do well, you will make it to the end of the year series championship. The showdowns are direct route, but consistency is rewarded here on the NRG series. And when you win those showdowns, you actually get an inkling custom token. Let's pull that up real quick here. We actually see our team showdown winner from earlier this year. They, as a group, got a token, and they did Fable the Mirror Breaking. You see each of the members sort of shown in the reflection there. Pretty cool. Those are handed out at our events and given to you as a player. Anyone who wins one of our Saturday showdowns will get that in the team events once you get a shared token, which is really sweet. We love Inkling tokens, and we're glad to have them here. However, that is going to do it for us this round. The round timer just went over. We're going to be two or three minutes before the next round shows up. So make sure to click that follow button. That way you don't miss any of the modern action. And we'll be back in just a couple minutes.